mute button on and mute your, yourself so that we don't hear chatter in the background. And also, if questions occur to you, please wait until um, Bill has uh, finished his um, presentation. Uh, if you want to remember them, tap them into, type them into the chat, and then they'll be there and will be ready for us when we've completed the conversation. So without further ado, uh, it is my honor and privilege to share with you Bill Colick, who comes to us highly recommended um, by Charlotte King. Uh, she says he's one of the most amazing men who lives in Lewis. And so without further ado, <laughs> I'm going to go over to Bill. Um, and I'm going to black my screen out because my internet is not so great and I, I don't want to in, impede the presentation. So, Bill, please take it away. Good evening, uh, everyone, and thank you, Reverend Ross, for inviting me. I'm going to tell Charlotte King that's all in my own mind. Uh, when I reflect on my life and growing up in Lewis, I begin by saying, and I always say that you are certainly uh, are blessed with, with who you're born to. You really are. And, and look at my life, I was blessed to be born to my mother, Emily Collick, as well as having the opportunity to grow up in Lewis. I, I, I really believe that Lewis was a pretty special place to grow up. And you, you talk about segregation. Lewis was a pretty special place still to grow up. I grew up living on Burton's Avenue under the influence of my mother, Emily, and my grandmother, Anna Ball. Uh, I've always believed that my grandmother was wise counsel. She's wise beyond her years and that she consistently, I thought, made good decisions uh, uh, that seemed to always benefit her entire family. My grandmother was a stay-at-home grandmother. My grandfather, Thomas Collick, had a job as a cook on a boat. Uh, upon his passion, my grandmother, remarried and was still a stay-at-home worker. She, at that point in time, would take in ironing and took care of myself and my cousins as my mother uh, was a domestic worker. Today, they call it days working that she actually cleaned houses for multiple families uh, on different days. Uh, Six years earlier, my grandmother was wise uh, uh, and the true nature of our family, uh, gave us great care, fed us uh, well, and always had more than we needed to eat. Uh, we were clean. She provided great shelter as the home on Burton's Avenue was hers. Uh, people talk about primary doctors today. My, I, I remember growing up, my, my grandmother, we had a, there was a doctor, he was a heart uh, doctor on Lewis Beach and his name was Dr. Treme. And, uh, he had an office there and my grandmother kind of had a relationship with him and we went to him for anything that we needed medically. He, he, he'd take care of us. Uh, she had the ability, I always thought, to develop relationships and she was trustworthy. Uh, thus, she had an account at Franklin's Hardware uptown. Uh, she had uh, an account with Mr. White. Mr. White had a grocery store since long gone. Uh, and I, as I told you, she also ran an account at the, at the doctor's office. She would religiously walk uptown with us uh, when she received my grandfather's social security check at the end of the month and, and take care of things. And as a result, we'd be able to go back and do the same thing again. Church and Sunday school, uh, were big parts, we went to uh, St. Paul's Church, which is now a home, were big parts of our family. My mother, went to church and also taught Sunday school there for 40 years. Uh, the church would play a large part. I had an uncle Carl and uh, he got a college degree in the forties. And uh, at, after eighth grade in this area, there was no place for blacks to go to school. So my grandmother uh, got him uh, with a lady that she had met in the church and she took him to Wilmington with her. And at that point in time, they, uh, he could go to school there and he went ninth and 10th grade there. And then uh, he finished up 11th and 12th grade at Delaware State in Dover. Delaware State at that time, just as they do today, had a high school component. So he finished up there uh, and finished his degree. And uh, he, he finished high school and stayed on, went to college. The first person in our family to, 
to finish high school and get a college degree. And thus, he, he uh, presented a great uh, uh, example for us uh, to, to get college degrees. Uh, he's always letting us know that uh, he had expectations for us and he didn't really uh, accept a lot of excuses. I was born in 1952 and started first grade 58 at the then segregated DuPont Avenue School at the end of DuPont Street there in Lewis. At the time, due to segregation, African-American children were not allowed to attend kindergarten in the Lewis Special School District. So like a two grade setup, first and second grade in one room, uh, third and fourth grade in another room, and fifth and sixth grade in another room. Uh, Mrs. Grace, uh, Mrs. Davis was the first and second grade teacher. Mrs. Grace Jones was the third and fourth grade uh, teacher. Mrs. Mary Holmes Jones was the fifth and sixth grade teacher. And she was uh, very versatile. She played a wonderful piano. Uh, and out of that came things like uh, concerts and plays and those, those type things. I also remember that Mrs. Argo and Mrs. Smith would at some point serve as teachers at the DuPont Avenue School as well. Uh, our teachers were loving, uh, great structure. They were strict and uh, they had a wonderful connection to all of our families. Uh, whoever had a child that went to that school had a connection with our teachers. Uh, they also were well connected in the communities and you would see them in church as well as you would see them in the store. Uh, uh, not in the beginning, but I think grades around grades five and six, I remember that white teachers would come across uh, from the school on Savannah Road and, and serve us there. And uh, they were uh, Mr. Bain, who was a music teacher. Uh, Mrs. Ellis uh, was also, Mrs. I'm sorry, Mr. Bain was a band teacher. Mrs. Ellis was the music teacher. Mr. Hanley was a gym teacher and there simply has not been a finer man to live. He, he was quite, quite special. And Mrs. Ratliff was the school nurse who would come. And uh, uh, the, the district could not have picked a better group of people. Not only were they excellent instructors and good people, but they simply did not seem to be phased that in this case, they would now be the minority. Uh, I thought that Little League Baseball uh, played a large part in my growing up in Lewis. Uh, it was segregated until about 1962. And at that point in time, I'd, I'd meet some lifelong friends that I still spend time with today, the likes of Rob Schroeder, whose father was the, was the artist, uh, uh, Ray Quillen, and then a guy, Larry Anderson. And they were special guys, and, and uh, it, it was a good time for us. Uh, after sixth grade, uh, Jay Collin lived next door to me and his father, uh, Jake Sr. actually would, would take us and to get haircuts and those type things. But, but uh, Jake and I were born in February. Uh, he was about four days older than me and we were, we were best friends and we actually walked to school to DuPont Avenue in, in the first grade. Um, uh, we, 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 we were in the field one day, just kind of playing around and, and, and there was an opportunity to go to school. You know, our, our cousins went to Jason High School in Georgetown. And so it meant sometimes getting up at 5.15 and getting on that bus and riding just all around. And, and, and we were again in the field playing at Ship Carpenter Square. Uh, and we did it most days with the Schroeders and the Salisbury's and the Peppers and just so on. It's just guys in the town. And uh, we, we felt we had made good friends and that we treated each other very well. And uh, we saw an opportunity again, not to get on that bus so early in the morning and ride to Georgetown. Uh, and so we both said, we were gonna ask our parents. And they said, yeah, you, you can go. So we would continue to walk uh, through the DuPont deal and right over to the school on Savannah Road. My parents said, yes. Georgetown was the home of William C. Jason and Georgetown now is the Dell Tech. Uh, at, at, time it, it, at that time, it had been the school that blacks would have to go to school as a result of segregation after sixth grade. Jason was 
a proud institution of learning. And I like to think that I had the best of both worlds because I lived on the street with the Corsis and the Reeses who lived up the street and down the street from me. And they went to Jason. They were a little older. They played in the field with us there where Ship Carpenter Square is today. Uh, but they, but they, they played football and baseball at Jason High School. And so they played on Saturday mornings and they would take me with them sometime. So I, I kind of got uh, the best of the both of us with that. Uh, then would come seventh and eighth grade football come into play. And I uh, had the fortune of crossing paths with Mr. Stenger, who was a biology teacher, uh, Dr. Robinson, David Robinson, who was the interim superintendent at Cape and Open for a while, but a uh, longtime superintendent, he's Rodney. Uh, he was just starting his career then. Mr. Gordowski was an art teacher. And, and then I had uh, good fortune of, of getting involved with, with, with Frank Kowaleski. And Coach Kowaleski was from Rehoboth. And what he did is when the schools consolidated in 1970, Milton, Rehoboth, and Lewis, he became a head football coach. And uh, just as most good coaches do, his influence would, would last me a lifetime. I not only worked for him, I also worked for him at, as a lifeguard uh, in Rehoboth Beach. Uh, he and Mr. Hickman, Tom Hickman was the driver's Zig teacher. And when Janet Maul and I graduated from college, we had went to school there doing consolidation, first graduating class in 1970. He, he actually went to the district office, he and Coach Kowaleski and said that Janet Maul and I were good people and that the district need to hire him. I think the, the superintendent at the time told him that he certainly would do the hiring and they would do their job, but uh, I, I found out later those two guys went uh, on behalf of us. When I look at growing up in Lewis, there were established black businesses at that time and the likes of Corsi's Cleaners was on the corner across from the hospital. Cal Painter um, ran a rooming house not very far from the Lewis Historical Society complex Jimmy Thompson and Charles Satchels were owned barber shops uh, in the area. There were hairdressers like Mrs. Thelma Paskins and Mrs. Kitty Stewart. Um, Burton Dunning had a garage uh, in that area. The Happy Day Club is now a home where it was. Crew Down is now a home. And, and Lewis Beach, I thought, served us well. There was a pavilion there. And also there was a uh, restaurant and dance hall and it was run by a man by the name of Johnny Walker who was a deacon in the church in Milton. And it was a real uh, structured, no nonsense place, but you could go, you were safe and your parents knew you were there. And it really uh, was, was, was a wonderful place. And to the point that people from uh, Rehoboth and Milford and Millsbury and Georgetown and Seaford and surrounding areas all came there for dances. And so it was really run well and it was quite, quite special. Uh, you know, people, you often say that it takes a village to raise kids. And, and, and I look at uh, Lewis at that time. If you look at Ship Carpenter Square, from Ship Carpenter Square West, uh, it was predominantly African-American from Ship Carpenter Square going east towards the beach. It was mostly Caucasian people. I look at the, the Black families that were there. and They included the Malls and the Corsis and the Gibbs, the Stewarts, uh, the Gooches, and I married a Gooch, the Paskins, uh, the Rileys, the Reeses, the Bowdens, the Kennedys, the Palmers, the... Uh, Dunnings, uh, Stokely, Smiths, the Browns, the Lockwoods, and, and the Millers, and they all were, were special people. They, uh, you know, you ought to be home when the street lights come on. If you weren't, they'd kind of move you along, and they were just pillars in the community. Uh, Sundays in this area were pretty special too, especially during baseball season there was an integrated uh, baseball team. They're called the Lewis Cardinals. And Dave Truitt, who has since passed away, I remember 
he he played and I think his son runs Detroit uh, insurance agency right there. But uh, I mean, there were there were it was integrated and it was, and it was always crowded. At, it was done after church and it was a big part of that. I, I thought the mayor that time of that time, Otis Smith, uh, you know, he ran that Manhattan fishing industry there. And, and, and in the late 50s and 60s, he actually had something that sometimes we fail to be able to do today. He had whites and blacks working side by side and doing well, and he was paying a livable wage. So a lot of black people were able to obtain property and houses as a result of that fishing industry. And I guess it was a number one in the world at one time. I mean, I think there were vitamin B12 and paint out of this and all kinds of stuff from the Manhattan fish. Uh, I, I, I remember going to town and there was a, a five and 10 store, Frank Fox owned it and uh, walking into the store and, and getting the goods that you needed. Um, I said the watch had a store there. And so I, I it was a pretty smooth, <clears throat> excuse me, transition I thought uh, uh, when when the segregation uh, ended in this area uh, if you went up the road just to Milford there was a lot of turmoil and and problems and so uh, the, it was I thought the whites and blacks uh, did more than exist in Lewis at that time uh, so I you know want to say that uh, that's kind of my time of growing up in Lewis and, and what I remember, and certainly anyone has any questions or anything at this point in time, I'd be glad to do my best to answer them. Well, thanks, Will. Uh, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask about what it was like to be in Lewis? I see Pam's got her hand up. I would love to see you write a little book on this to put in the historical society. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'll certainly do my, my best. I certainly have a relationship with Jim Abbott as well. And so I, I, I would, um, I, I, I really mean it. I, I thought it, my, my friend and I were talking today. Uh, I thought this was a wonderful place to grow up. And I, uh, I was pretty fortunate. I, I, I think, uh, you know, the, the schools consolidated, and of course, then there were three different towns of Milton and Lewis and uh -huh. Oberth, and I thought, I thought it worked out well. I really did. And I'm telling you, just up the, the road, and, and I'm going to be negative, but in Milford, it was a mess. That's a really shame. Was. It really was. Uh, uh, I, I, I think our, our kids do much better sometime than, than we do. I have uh, an older granddaughter, and then I have two um, two young ones, one's in the second grade, and I spent a lot of time with her. And, you know, I, I, I listened to her say the Pledge of Allegiance and, you know, at the end, you know, justice for all, and then she will proceed to, they have a pledge at their school, where with each elementary, and she talks about things they will be and do today. And, and certainly it, it gives me wonderful, hope it, it really does the, the one thing that I'm really concerned about and you know you, you read stuff and you, you look at history and I, I would say that we it's, it's American history it's it's if, if people would, would would and we haven't been able to we haven't been able to get books and I spent 43 years in education but we haven't been able for whatever reason to teach true, uh, concise American history. We we seem to not want to do it. I, I and I, I'll tell you. I, I look at five years ago, six years ago. I never knew that the ladies that did the coordinates and whatever for the space deal there were African American. So shame on me. I I never knew that. And 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 I, and I think if we could ever get away with maybe get away from thinking maybe that some folks have been hashed or they have no history 
I, I think if Bush, you just would sit down and take a look at some things that have been been done. I mean, it's we we all have great history, and I I wish we would really really kind of look at it and dig into it. And I'm hoping we can get get there. I I'm intrigued by the honestly by the I've read a lot about <clears throat> Otis Smith and that plan and what he was doing back then and talked to a lot of people, older people who said that, you know, he, he was a guy that paid a wage that allowed you to, 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 you know, home ownership and, and those type things. Bill, could you say some more about the difference between Milford and Lewis? I mean, what, what was it that you think made well, Lewis pass through that time more easily than maybe other places in the state? I, I, I really think part of it was because of Voter Smith. I, I really did. I, I thought he he got folks working and 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 side by side and and you know I've always been a guy that believes that we, we could sit down that that we're never as far apart as we think we are. We really aren't. And I I think that was a big thing. I think there was, you know, I, I, when, I, when I worked at Cape and Lopen, I used to say that w what would be the likelihood that you may have a cup of coffee or a meal or something with someone this weekend that doesn't look like you or doesn't, you know, I, I think sometimes we just don't do it enough and and we really missed the boat. We we are and, and, and we're all guilty of it. You know, <clears throat> I look back, I spent 20 years at Delaware State as the head football coach in the last five as the athletic director. And, and when we talk about unconscious bias, and I I I uh, we recruited a young man who was supposed to go to William and Mary. His mother didn't like how he was recruited. And he, he was a Muslim faith. And we had some, some real connections there. We had ladies at Watcote United Methodist Church in Dover that used to, uh, we take the team one time on, sun, on a Sunday when we broke summer camp to Watcote. And so uh, they make a great meal for us and the whole deal. And, and it was wonderful, but I, didn't I didn't think that I, I probably needed to ask this young man if he mind going to church. He was a Muslim faith and, and, and he went with this. But then during spring ball, it was time for him in his religion to go to the Mecca. Of course, you know, as a coach, well, do you want to, you know, you're going to miss spring ball and miss some school and whatever. Had a wonderful talk, sat down with his parents. And boy, he did a great job for us and graduated. But, you know, sometimes we, we just don't, we're all are guilty of some unconscious bias and we don't, we don't realize it. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I just think about that at times that, but, I, but I, I think there were some, I just think that, I also think that there was respect for people in Lewis and, and I thought that, that ship carpenter square area there was nothing but a field, but boy, the baseball team was integrated. I, I just think there were people who kind of knew each other a little better and got to know each other and worked with and for each other. And I think that's, that was the difference in my opinion. I mean, I mean, there was never any question. I, I, I talked to someone who went there and you weren't allowed to go to dances and that kind of stuff. And that's not a part of Lewis. It just didn't happen that way. Hmm. Well, thanks. Uh, are there some other questions? If, if anybody would like to raise, uh, Eleanor Boyce, you have your hand up. I have two questions for you. At what point in your growing up did you have your first white teacher and were there any effects of that? And then well, in your career, did you ever feel um, not respected? Let, let me let me tell you. So I, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I I guess I first I had uh, I told you those those teachers came over from the Savannah Road School, 
to the DuPont Avenue School. And I think we might have been in fifth grade. I, I remember we actually, they got it, they got a, a room built on and, and it included a shower. And so it was our first taste of having organized gym. And Mr. Don Hanley was the gym teacher. And I said to you early on, what a wonderful, respectful I I go to church with his uh, daughter, Mary Lou. And I, I, I said to her a while back just what uh, her father uh, was about. Mrs. Ratfish was um, the nurse and just kind and gentle and and, and, and Mr. Bain actually started a band at, at North Junior High School. So I, I, I really had a, had a good time and I, I, I didn't feel disrespected. In fact, Mr., when I got to high school, Mr. Sneller was the chemistry teacher. And if anybody was having trouble with chemistry and on Tuesdays and Thursday morning, he would meet you at seven o'clock, and I guess you had to be committed to come, but we, we all came and, and, uh, and, and got some things done that we needed to get done. And so I, I just didn't, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I've, I've attempted to tell my uh, kids, you know, um, there's some people that look just like them that they need to get a, as far away from as they can and some people that don't. They need to do the same. And if they would make uh, good choices, that they would be okay. And I, I kind of, you know, I've kind of, kind of lived that. I, I, I told you about my uncle. My uncle took 101 and 102 math at Delaware State and was taught by white ex DuPont chemist George Seidel. And George Seidel said that he should be a chemist because he can do math. And my Grandmother told him before he left that uh, he had to do his best every day, but he also had to do what grown folks told him to do. So that's that's what he did. He went to Philadelphia, married my aunt. She was in education, and then uh, two years later, si Dr. Seidel calls him and says, "Yeah, you know, he was working for the city of Philadelphia in the water department. That that he needed to go to the Philadelphia Navy Yard, and and he was take a test. He's bright, uh, but it's uh, jet fuels." Jets fly at such high altitudes at that time they were uh, developing particles in the fuel and working on additives. And he worked that job for 35 years. And I, I think it's all about people. I, I, I think it's all about experiences. So some people don't have any experiences, don't want those experiences. And I really think that's the basis for the turmoil at times that we have with, with the race. I, I, think, I think people don't have experiences. I always say, boy, if we, world looked at like it'd be a pretty dull world. We, we'd all be the same, really. So I, I really think, really, my, my wife had a great experience. You know, she, um, it's August, and she's still kind of senior year. What, what am I going to do? And one of the teachers, one of the white teachers, actually called Cape and Lopen and asked him about an, an individual with, with a science after two that was starting a new program at Dell Tech. And, she goes over and gets an associate's degree and then gets an RN degree and then goes back and gets a, a degree in respiratory therapy. And, and, you know, again, you know, we, I think we had a great uh, structure with, you know, Fred Thomas was the principal and boy, he, he was really a sharp guy. And, you know, you wanted to be like him. Uh, our teachers early on had expectations for us and, I thought we took that and, and grew with that. And, and I'm sure there were some people that when we went to the, the school there probably had some concerns or whatever, but things really uh, went well for us. How about when you started your teaching career? Did you feel respected? At yeah, <laughs> let, 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 let me say this to you. I, uh, when I started my teaching career, honestly, uh, I had uh, the good fortune of a great friend, I'm going to tell you, who became a great friend, who, who saved me in my thoughts from myself. I, and I'm going to say this to you guys. I I, uh, I, I had, uh, I'm going to say it, I had a lady by the name of Sarah Wilkerson. 
I'm going. I'm going to say I don't want to embarrass her, but but she was um, was someone who kind of told me what I should do and what I should be doing. Uh, later on, when I ran for the school board, she did the same thing again, and I certainly didn't look like her, but obviously she'd had some experiences from parents or somewhere, and I and I think that's the that's the difference. I I, I just you know I I, I got to say this and probably talking too much, but I. I, uh, my freshman year in college, I actually worked for a guy uh, who was a painter and we did uh, a house in Lewis and the owner of the house, and I'm going to say his name was Cliff Johnson. Cliff Johnson every day would come in. I was the only black guy on that crew and buy all of us lunch. And boy, I mean, he, he, he really it was important to him. I later would coach his son, Randy, who, after talking with him, played Little League Baseball. At that point in time, it was integrated. Uh, and and just, just like him. Last summer, I had my granddaughter here, uh, McKenna, and she, we have a swing set out back. And we look up, and she's over across the street. And she's playing with this little girl. She comes running back. and. I asked Nancy, my wife, for a swimsuit. And we said, well, Kenny, you can't, you can't invite yourself places. And, and so we get the swimsuit and said, look, we got to walk over here. Walk over. And there's Cliff Johnson's daughter, Kathy Johnson. And she's just like Randy Johnson and Cliff. And she says, uh, they're playing together. And I, I wanted her to come. And, and, I, and I, I talked to Randy the other day. I hadn't talked to him a long time. And we were talking about race. And he said, you know, coach, you just get people at times that have no references, have no experiences. And, and as a result, they simply don't seem to be able to get it right. I, I, I really had a wonderful time in River Beach Elementary School. And, and it was a real uh, uh, point of getting ready to go to the high school and then ready, getting ready to run a program at, uh, at uh, Delaware State as the head football coach. And of course, in college football, if you don't win and run a program and kids aren't graduating, you don't last very long. And I stayed there 20 years with three college presidents. So all those great things that I got from that, those first experience were pretty good. And I appreciate it. Well, I don't know if you realize that, Bill, that that was Sarah who asked you that question. Yeah, it, it sounded like her. And I'm going to say to you, I, 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 I'm indebted to her. I, I really did. You know, you get out of college and you really, you're just kind of, you know, they, they teach you certain things, but from lesson plans to all kinds of things, here's what you should do and here's what you can do and here's what you can't do. Of course, you're responsible for people's kids and you, you got to make sure that you, you know those things proper. So I was really blessed to, to have her and she just, and, and I'll be honest with you, I ended up working with her daughter and she's the same way. And again, I, I, Again, I've just been very fortunate to run into good people. I have, and everybody doesn't like what, you, what you're doing and whatever, but I've, I've been able to, to run into good people. And as a result, things have worked out well. That's great. Other questions that folks have? Um, I'm one, of the, one of his greatest accomplishments, I think, is when the football program at Cape and Lupin High School was in dire need of bringing people together and, and helping through a troubled time. And when I prayed on this, I knew that Bill Collick was the only person who could ever do that. And he went in there and did just that for, saved a lot of kids and a lot of parents, a lot of trouble. Yeah, I, absolutely. One thing absolutely. Thank you. Had a lot of good help. Did. I believe Eleanor had her hand up. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, go ahead, Eleanor. I was wondering if um, you are still in contact with some of your childhood friends in the neighborhood. Um, do they still live in Lewis or have they moved elsewhere? You know, that's a that's a great question. And, and I'll tell you, I'm still in contact, but you know from properties to whatever, you know, that that is really taking a different spin. And 
and I, that's a great question you have. I, I'm really concerned about just almost a a mass hole and 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 burying the great history that that families. I, I bet you there aren't nine African American families from Savannah Road or Kings Highway to Pollock Town Road down. And at one time, it were it was an unbelievable amount of African Americans, American families there. And so I'm in contact with some, but you know, some have moved, some have never came back. So many have sold the properties, and as a result, you know, and you, you can't kind of get back in there. I I, I had a guy some the other day that that he rode through who lived there, and he he kind of felt like he no longer belonged. Mm -hmm. oh. And and to be honest with you, we would run those streets and play there. I mean, so so much. Uh, it, it it's just you know it's just kind of where it is now. And I I am hoping that we, uh, someone made a great point and I'm going to do it, that we can, through the Lewis Historical Society, that we may be able to, to at least document the history of, of Lewis. I mean, it, it's, and document it fully. I, I, it's, it's just, it's, it's not fully, it really isn't. Uh, so uh, that's a great, great question. I, I still talk and hear from some of them, but they're not living in Lewis now. Do they live far away? Um, or are Some they... do. I talked I talk to a guy today that from Wilmington, and then I talked to a guy the other day that uh, lives in Milton, you know, and, and I, I tell you, a lot of African Americans sold their property at some point, and, and it probably seemed like a lot of money, but at that point in time, it probably really wasn't. And it, it's kind of happened. It, it really has. I mean, you, you look at uh, those streets. I mean, there, there were, there were from, I don't know, probably West 4th Street West, uh, there just were not any Caucasian people at that time. They were all Black families and Black working families who were pillars and supporters and I mean, there were teachers and there were all kinds of people in, in that community. There were business owners. Uh, there were, and it's it's kind of gone. When the fish factory stopped operating, is that when a lot of people moved out? Or yeah, see, I still think you know. I, I look at the fish factory, and I look at um, oh God, uh, the church there at the end of West 4th Street. Um, I'm drawing a blank, but Reverend, it was, is the uh, Friendship, Friendship Baptist Church. And even when that fish factory, that church was moved there. And I mean, it, it served generations of people and there's still people that live uh, in this area that are in the Milton area and that were, their families were, were, I mean, a part of that. I, I, don't, I don't think it necessarily was the fish factory as much as I just think there was a time that, and I don't think you probably much thought put into it. Of course, I guess maybe maybe some people were priced out of it. You know, you always hear things like redlining. And I'm going to tell you, I think, I know, for the most part, people lived in Lewis. I mean, there were not people on second, African Americans on Second Street, but when I look at my my one of my teachers lived right across the street uh, from uh, the Lewis Historical Society complex. Really, uh, Caleb Pater's house is right there, and Jimmy Thompson lived there as well. Had the barber shop; it was right there. Uh, Nancy's cousin, the Ward cousins, the Wards lived probably three doors down from uh, going to Worstown from, um, you know, the Lewis Historical Society uh, uh, on like Third Street. So, I mean, there were a lot of African-Americans that at one time lived um, in Lewis. 
So Bill, what can we do about this? Well, let, let, me, let me say one of the first things that I think we do. And I'm, I'm gonna say this because I, 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 I just, I, I look at the things going on with the fishnet reel. Mm -hmm. And and if in fact, and I'm going to say this, if in fact things that are on the Lewis Historical Society campus are artifacts or or integral parts of what Lewis was about, then to not believe that that fishnet reel is worthy to stay there when it was such an integral part of what Lewis became as a result of that. It was such an integral part of whites and blacks getting together and working together in the late 50s and early 60s. And I, I live in Overbrook Shores. And across the street from me, there was a house right on the water that actually uh, we had to get a variance for because the the uh, rip rat wasn't where it needed to be and uh, had washed some of the shore away. And they're called variances and they are given in America every single day. And so I, I, I you say, what can you stop? I think we got to stop the shenanigans of not wanting to be truthful about things that are important, things that like history, like we, we say, what can we do? We need to begin to teach all inclusive history uh, in all of the schools in America, African-American history. We, we, we need to do those type things. I, I, I believe this, see, I think when kids don't see people who look like me making any decisions or in charge. They don't ever think they can be it or do it. I think when kids who don't look like me don't see anybody that looks like me in charge or making decisions, they don't think you have to respect. And I think that's 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 something that's gone on. And if kids would would begin to get good history and, and, and those type things and people and, and, and older people would begin to, you know, we kick this can down the road for so long and, Bill, and we all stop. Bill, this is Natalie Kerr and you and I were neighbors. Yes, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you good. doing? Good. good. Did you ever have any problems at Overbrook? Or in, in any no, you, you, let me say this. Let me say this to you. When we, my wife and I, you were there long before. Bought this, we right, bought this property and sat on it. You know, I, I talk to people sometimes, you know, until we were able, back then you had to have a down payment. You know what I mean? So, so we bought the property. Then we saved enough money for the down payment, banks required, that kind of stuff. And I, 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 I my neighbor next door said to me one time that someone made, a comment to her about, well, um, I, I, I pity you're going to live next door to some Blacks. And uh, she really set her straight. And, and the lady next door who sits past her husband actually helped us raise our kids. Our kids uh, would stay there at times if they needed to and that kind of stuff. And so I, I, I didn't. Now, I, I've had folks who, um, you know, we, we have, Mr. Kerr, we have a my mother would live with us and she was almost 90 and we had a, a light that Delaware Co-op put up in the front and then we put one on the back lot as well and I, I think some people didn't want street lights and but but no I, I don't think you know uh, we, didn't, we didn't seem to anyway have any or, or at least nobody nobody said it. Well Jack and I certainly enjoyed having you as a neighbor and then well, I, I, well, thank you very much, and we, we likewise. But what can we do? You know, our church, we had a joint meeting 
with the people at Friendship. And it was, it was, it was a Bible study last year. Mark Harris got it together. Okay. And we were just very separate. It was lovely. It was nice to be with them, but we don't do anything together. We've been, we invite people and we have a few blacks in the church, but mm -hmm. St. Peter's is pretty white. Um, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Kerr's amazing, but of course they say it's the most segregated hour on Sunday. You know, I, I, uh, I grew up at St. Paul's, of course it's a home now, and, and they sold the church. And so I, I went to Watcote when I was spending a lot of time in Dover. And I, I had a friend that she would go and she had went to meet with me at St. Paul's. And when they sold the church and we had a job driving to Rehoboth, we were, were looking for a church home. And certainly we just said, we're working on our own soul. And we began to go to Bethel with her and, and we joined. And, and, you know, when I was coaching football at times latter, latter time, uh, we actually, you, you know, we worked on Sunday. So they had an eight o'clock service and it really worked out for us. And we still were there. My son got married in that church. My granddaughter goes there. And, and so I, you know, I, I still think that's a great ideal to have Bible studies or, or have a connection with, with uh, friendship. And I, I just think that's the only way that we're, that's one of the great ways that we can do it. You know, uh, Dr. King said it best. I think he said, one time he said that we may have come in different ships, but one day we would all find that we're in the same boat. And I, I think we, we really need to understand that. I, you know, I've spent a lot of time in education. I don't know anybody that doesn't want the best for their kids. I, I used to see Delaware State at that time had a little slag road. It wasn't a walking campus that it is now. And it didn't make any difference who it was. It appeared to me that people were dropping their kids off there in August and September looking for a better way of life for their kids. And I, and I think that's where we are. I think we all want the best for our kids and, and gosh darn it, if we would stop and just look and just, just take a look, we, we just aren't nearly as far apart as we think we are. We are. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Thank you. Eleanor. Anyone else have, uh, we're, we're kind of just have a couple minutes left. Are there any other questions that anyone wishes to share? Gary? Yeah, yes, just, just a, a quick one. Um, you apparently grew up in an era of segregation. Yes. Um, I did too. I, I was nine years old when you were born. So okay. I, I, I was in that era also. How did the uh, civil rights movement in 64 and 65 have an effect on you and the people in Lewis? Well, I, I remember this. Uh, my cousin was at Delaware State at that time. Of course, they brought the National Guards to Wilmington. And they actually, I mean, she, they didn't complete. I mean, they, I think they completed it, but it wasn't on campus. And I don't know. I don't, as I look back on it, I, I, I still, that I do remember that because I looked up one day and she said, we had to come home. Um, I, I, I don't know if Lewis, I, I just, and, and maybe, maybe I was not aware. I, you, you know what I thought, Gary, that, that my wife and I talk about it. I thought our parents shielded us from much mm of the strife as they could. I, I right. really do, and I think never got the credit for that that they should have had. But I, but but again, I I I I just remember. I, I mean, it just wasn't talked about in our home. It was like, got to go to school, got to get an education. My 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 mother was really about school. I remember I did. I had perfect attendance from 
first grade to 12th grade. I, I guess mm. I, I was never sick or, or whatever. And I mean, and, and my uncle had gotten that degree in the 40s and, you know, he, he, we were really focused on, on that deal and, and trying to find out, uh, trying to be mean-spirited to people. I, I'm so glad it was just never what I found. I think, the, I feel the Gucci's were the same way. Uh, they, my wife's family, we, we just weren't that way. My, mm. her aunt taught Sunday school and my mother mm. did, and I don't know. And, and we, I guess we're looking at the, the good in people. I, I still believe, I, I still believe in people. I, I, I still think, boy, if you would sit down, you could see more people. It's important. It, it really is. Thank you. I like your ideal about getting the churches together. I think it would be tremendous. And, and, and I know they have ministries that I, I, I think, I think area churches, I think have some type of ministry where, uh, or some type of group or committee where they all meet and come together. And I wish Mrs. Kerr that somebody, Reverend Ross would look at that and see if we could get more of the area churches. And we say, well, with friendship is in Lewis and it's there. I know there's a church on New Road, but I, I wish we could get some people to do that. And really. have the difficult conversations. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we call them, we call them courageous conversations, but you're right. <laughs> have them, have them and, 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 and it's, it's okay. It, it, it really is. It, it's, it's okay. It would also be really nice if people could sort of um, enjoy our differences yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. You know, just know each other and enjoy each other. Yeah. And it, spend time with each other. That's exactly. the key. I, I think, think that's a, I think that's a real key to spend. You said it. To spend some time with each other. I just think you well, you'll find out some things. I, I learned a lot. Uh, I, I learned a lot uh, about the uh, the, the kid uh, at our school played for us and, and, and the Muslim faith. And then I got to be friends with a guy by the name of Joel Simon, who Joel Simon is in charge of counselors at Cape and Open High School. He was Jewish and he began to talk to me about that faith. And, and so, you know, I, you, 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 you get, and boy, you know, he has two wonderful kids and wonderful wife. And, you know, I talked to him just the other day and One's in college now, and one's a junior. Gosh darn, I wanted the same thing for mine. I really did. All right, I'm going to let Michael Potter have the last question. I think he's been trying to get in, and, and then we'll wrap it up for the night. Michael, over to you. Yeah, um, it's probably not a, a super big question, but um, you talked a little bit about um, the Black community in West Lewis. How about um, in, in more recent times, we're kind of watching the disappearance of Jimtown and Belltown. And yeah. um, I had to ask about those, um, if you're familiar with that and what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's uh, for me, I think it's much of the same. I, I was talking to a guy who's a minister in Wilmington now, and he went to that, um, that school there that they're trying to, uh, they're trying to uh, save. You, you know the school, if you go through and look to the right, go through five points. And he was just talking about his teacher, Mrs. Glenn there, who took kids home when their parents were working and all the things that were going on there. And he's pretty, been pretty successful. He worked for DuPont and then got into the ministry. But yeah, and I, 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 I and, and it, it appears that it's all about, I guess, money and that, that selling the land and buying the land and, and then just never able to get back in that area. You, you just, you, 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 you're not. And you know, when, when, and when you think about that, you say, well, there's not one black family in Lewis. Boy, that's dangerous. That is, you say, well, we don't have any, there's just no, I mean, we don't correspond with anybody that doesn't look like us. I, I think that is so dangerous. It's dangerous for us. It's dangerous for our kids. It really is. But that's what's happening. You're right. I mean, that's a great assessment. 
you know, from businesses are buying those homes and houses and they're just kind of pushing out. Yeah, great point you have. And, you know, you, know you, you don't even find the number um, of, of African-American kids at, at Cape and Lopen High School. I mean, not that, not, not like it was at one time. And I guess it's affordability and just, you know, not and, 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 you know, I don't think kids get a good holistic education if it fits just for, you know, just for a certain, a certain group of kids. And so we work very hard with hiring and, 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 and all those things and attempting to get a diverse group of people uh, teaching our kids and, and kids growing with each other. It is just so important. It's almost, it's almost like uh, the quiet segregation in some, in some ways, as far as it's connected to, to, to money. So therefore the, it tends to be, it gets the schools more white again, just because other people can't afford to live here anymore. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, you, you're, you're really right. And, and it's, it's just kind of happened. And man, I'll tell you, and you know, I, I, I I, I just tell you, Lewis, for me, and I think if you talk to most people who grew up African-Americans, it was a great place to grow up. It, it, it really was. Uh, there was there was contact with each other. There, 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 really, there really was. There, and it's, it's scary. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate your time and, and for sharing your perspective with us. Uh, just a reminder, this is part of our Lenten series, and we started off with uh, Father Mark talking about the history of race within the Episcopal Church, and we heard last week from uh, Dr. Casson and his experience of growing up in the midst of the civil rights movement up in Wilmington and, and uh, knitting two congregations together, a black one and a white one. It, Bill, um, we really appreciate you helping us to unearth some of the history here in Lewis. And next week, uh, we'll be building our conversation uh, with a presentation uh, on um, uh, from Dr. Larita on uh, Thurgood or Thur Thurman Marshall. The Thur oh God, I'm mixing it up. Um, what's his name? I just Howard Thurman. Thurman. Howard, Howard Thurman. Thurman. Sorry. Um, Howard Thurman and from Shalane program and that program will not be able to record so please make sure that you can join us um, and uh, to hear um, and to participate in this if you have to miss it and you need a connection uh, so that you can subscribe on your own just send me an email and I'll be glad to help you uh, hook up with Dr. Larita Brown's uh, presentation so without Further ado, I wish you all a good night. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to Thank you. the conversation. Don't Thank forget Compline. Compline, oh, yes, and Compline tonight is at okay. seven thirty on YouTube or Facebook Live. So please join the choir uh, for uh, that presentation uh, of worship at seven thirty this evening. God bless you all. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bill. Yes. I wanted to come to your